How to tune a guitar. This video is part of a playlist for absolute beginners and it includes a number of very easy but very important lessons for absolute beginners. If you'd like to go through that playlist, I'll put the link down below in the description. Tuning a guitar is basically the same on an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar. So as we go through this tutorial, I'll use electric and acoustic guitars for illustration purposes. And that way you'll better be able to relate to what I'm talking about. Right, let's go through some basic information you'll need before we get started. Things you need to know before tuning a guitar. In this tutorial, we'll be tuning a standard six string guitar and the strings on a six string guitar are E, A, D, G, B, E. And straight away, you'll notice we've got two E strings, the thick stringed E string and the thin stringed E string. Now, when we refer to these, we call the thick string the bottom E string and the thin string the top E string. And this can be quite confusing because when you play the guitar, the bottom E string is on the top and the top E string is on the bottom. However, we're not referring to the position of the string, we're referring to the pitch. And the pitch of the bottom E is a lot lower than the pitch of the top E. You might find this way of naming the strings takes a little bit of time to get used to, but that's just the way it is. The bottom E string is this string, and the top E string is this string. So to recap, the names of the strings are bottom E, A, D, G, B, and top E. Looking at the end of the neck, this is the headstock. And mounted in the headstock are the tuners or machine heads. And these can be arranged differently depending on the make and type of guitar you own. However, how the tuners are arranged don't make any difference to the way you tune the guitar. You just have to take a special note to which tuner is connected to which string. Now, I do have to give a warning at this stage, but this is just for people with electric guitars, and you just need to check the nut. Now, if the nut looks like any of these, then you'll be fine. However, if the nut has bolts in it and a piece of metal going over the strings, then this is a locking nut, and you can't tune this guitar the way you tune a normal guitar. A locking nut basically locks up the strings so that the tuners become useless to you and you actually have to tune the guitar at the other end. And I'll cover this in a separate video. Tuning the guitar. There's actually a number of ways of tuning a guitar. However, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at the three easiest and most common methods. The first one is to use a guitar tuner. The second one would be to use reference notes. And the third one would be to tune the guitar to itself, which is sometimes combined with the reference note method. Right, let's get started then with method one. How to tune a guitar using a guitar tuner. There's literally hundreds of different types of tuners and it would be impossible to go through them all. But fortunately, they've got various elements in common with each other and we'll take a quick look at those first. Before you use a tuner you've not used before, you need to check it's set up correctly for the guitar. And the first thing to look for is a letter on the screen somewhere. And the letter on the screen could be G, 
B, V, U or C. And not so commonly other letters like for example key signatures. The more common letters stand for G for guitar, B for bass, V for violin, U for ukulele and C for chromatic. And you need to have the tuner either set to G for guitar which is the best setting or C for chromatic which is a universal setting for any instrument really. The next thing to look for is either A equals 440 or just 440 and this is the standard concert pitch. And there are people who use different pitches however if you're first learning the guitar most of the backing tracks and tuners will be set to 440 so you're best sticking with that. So if your tuner says something else for example 430 or 450 you need to find out how to adjust the tuner back to 440. Another thing to look for on the tuner before you try to tune the guitar would be sharp signs or flat signs because this can indicate that the tune is set to tune the guitar half a tone or a tone up or half a tone or a tone down which you don't want. So if there is a sharp or a flat sign on the screen you need to find the button to remove this. Now when you get a new guitar you quite often get a free tuner with it and for an absolute beginner these are probably the best because they usually just have one button on it and these turn the tuner on and turn the tuner off but also with a short push allow you to change which instrument you're tuning so you only have one adjustment to make. I have to give a warning at this point and that is that tuners aren't perfect and they can get it wrong. So for example if you've bought your guitar online and it's been shipped to your address you might find that it's been tuned right the way down to prevent damage during shipping. And in circumstances like this, it's not unusual for the tuner to take you to the wrong octave. Here I'm playing the top E string and then the E an octave down. However, the tuner's showing it to be the same note. Now, if you end up tuning an octave up, you could easily end up breaking the string. So, to get started, when the guitar's right out of tune, it's better to use reference notes. Tuning the guitar using reference notes. As the name suggests, tuning to a reference note means you tune each string to a note which you know is in tune. And you can use pitch pipes, or another guitar, or a keyboard, or a pre-recorded tone that you know is in tune. For this example I'll use a pre-recorded tone because I can provide a continuous tone that gives you plenty of time to tune your guitar string to that tone. I'll put the tones at the end of this video with chapter markers so you can easily find them and then you'll be able to tune your guitar by comparing it with those tones. But before you try that for yourself, I'll demonstrate it being done with an acoustic guitar that I've down-tuned right out of tune as if it's just arrived in the post. And I'll start by tuning the top E string, which is the thinnest string. And the reason I'm starting with this string is because it's closer to the centre of the sensitive point in human hearing. So you should find it easier to tune this string than the bottom E string. Firstly then, here's the top E string reference note. And I'll bring the guitar string up to match that reference note. And you'll notice I pluck the string before turning the tuner and this is so I can hear how far the string is being tuned. It's never a good idea to just turn the tuner without first playing the string because 
you don't know how far you're taking the string. Once you've got the top E string in tune with the reference note, you can use the B string reference note and tune the B string to that. But before we do that, it's worth me pointing out that I wouldn't normally tune a guitar like this with it lying on the desk. I'd usually tune it with the guitar on my knee in a normal playing position. I'm tuning it this way so you can see clearly what I'm doing without the camera moving around or going in and out of focus. Right, let's start the reference note so I can tune the B string. I'll point this out again because it is so important. Always pluck the string before turning the tuners because you need to know exactly how far you're tuning the string up. And once you're happy with the tuning of the B string, you can move on to the G string and just keep moving through the strings like that. Notice I strummed the open strings at the end there, and this is a really good idea. Either strung the open strings or your favourite chord, and do this every time you tune the guitar up and just listen to that chord. And what will happen is, eventually, you'll become tuned into that chord and you'll recognise when your guitar's out of tune. If you cast your mind back to the beginning of this video, we were originally talking about digital tuners. However, for those who've got new guitars that needed to be brought close to being in tune, we've used the reference note to get you there. And you might be lucky and that your guitar might already be in tune. But we'll double check now using the digital tuner method. As I've mentioned earlier in this video, there's lots of different types of digital tuner. However, they all tell you the state of the tuning on your guitar in a very similar way. And that is using either LEDs or a needle. Now, if the LEDs or needle are directly up in the centre, then this tells you the guitar's in tune. However, if the LEDs or needle go over to the left hand side, then this means that the guitar is flat and needs to be tuned up. But 
if the needle or LEDs go over to the right hand side then this tells us that the guitar is sharp and it needs to be flattened in order to come back to being in tune. So your goal when you're tuning your guitar using an electronic tuner is to get the LEDs or the needle straight up in the middle. And on some tuners the screen or the string name actually goes green to tell you that the string is in tune. Right, I'll go through this guitar again and check the strings one by one. However, I know I've actually lowered a couple of strings and hired them. So you can see how I use the tuner to adjust the guitar and get it in tune. Notice that I do very small turns of the tuner and this is because it's really easy to overshoot where you want to be. Right, there's one last method we need to look at and this is a method just for really checking your guitars in tune or if you suspect one or two of the strings are slightly out. How to tune the guitar to itself. To help explain how this works what I'll do here is play the open bottom E string and then play one fret up and then two frets up and three frets up etc etc and as the note gets higher and higher eventually this becomes the same note as the A string and the point at which that happens is the fifth fret so Theoretically, the 5th fret on the bottom E string should sound more or less the same as the open A string. Now, you do have to be careful because the open string will always sound a little different to a fretted note. And this tends to be the tone and not the pitch. So you're listening for a difference in the pitch. Now, if you were to move over and fret the 5th fret on the A string, this should sound the same as the open D string. And again, the 5th fret on the D string should sound the same as the open G string. As usual, things are never straightforward and the G string is the exception in this tuning rule. And on the G string you play the 4th fret which sounds exactly the same as the open B string. And finally you get to the B string and you play the 5th fret again which should sound the same as the open top E string. Now, when using this method, if you do find a string that's out of tune, don't tune it straight away. Go through all the strings before you start tuning 
because you need to deduce which strings is out of tune. So for example, if you were trying out the fifth fret on the A string to check the D string and it was out of tune, you wouldn't be sure if it was the D string that was out of tune or the A string. So by checking every string first, you should be able to deduce which string is actually out of tune. Finally, if you wanted to tune or check the guitar starting from the top E string, you just reverse what we've already played. However, obviously, make sure the top E string's in tune first. During this video, and especially during the last section where we looked at tuning the guitar to itself, there's an awful lot of information. So I've created a simple one page PDF that you can download completely free at www.ebooksforguitar.com and from the home page you just click on the lessons tab, then select whether you play the guitar right handed or left handed and there you can see the link to how to tune your guitar. And you can either download the PDF from the little browser that the PDF's appearing in, or from the link directly underneath it. And this video will appear there once I've uploaded it. I'll sign out now because the reference notes will appear at the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and found it useful. And if you did, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos and new lessons. And of course, you'll help the channel because you'll be notifying the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.